We distinguish between superiority and non-inferiority clinical trials. Now let's interpret clinical and surrogate endpoints used in non-inferiority clinical trials. Now let's take a look at the forest plot. So here I'm showing you eight different examples. So in a forest plot on the x-axis, we're looking at the actual outcome. So this is a generic version. So you can either, you know, plot difference, absolute difference, or you can plot a relative risk. Uh, but more importantly, um, on a forest plot, uh, the circle actually means, uh, look, uh, it shows you the point estimate of the actual study. And then the, um, you know, the basically the H shows you the confidence, the 95% confidence interval. So it shows you like the lower bound of the confidence interval and the higher bound of the confidence interval. And the circle is actually what they found is the point estimate of what they found in that study. Now in this orange line, it's actually showing you the point of uh, no difference. So if you're looking at the difference, zero would mean no difference. If it's, and if it's relative risk, uh, one would mean uh, no difference. And of course, if you're less than difference, less than zero or relative uh, risk of less than one, it would be in favor of intervention treatment. And on the other side, you will be in favor of standard treatment or the control group. So, so far we have only discussed superiority. So that would mean either intervention is superior to your uh, control group or the control is superior to uh, intervention, which would mean that the intervention is inferior to the control group or there would be no difference. So when you look at example A, you can see that, uh, you know, here's the point estimate and here's the confidence interval and the confidence interval did not cross the line of no difference. And we call that the superiority. So we will say that your intervention is superior to control group. Now, when it comes to non-inferiority studies, it's okay to cross the line of no difference because we're not really trying to show that you know, the intervention is superior to uh, to the control group, but what we're really interested in is to show that it's not too much worse. And too much worse is defined by the non-inferiority margin, so NI margin or non-inferiority margin or delta. So instead of line of no difference, now we're looking at the margin. So as long as the confidence interval doesn't cross the, uh, the delta, then we can claim non-inferiority. So in, you see in example B, it definitely crossed the line of no difference for superiority, so we cannot claim that intervention is superior to control, but because it didn't cross the delta, now we can claim that the intervention is non-inferior to the control group. The same is true with choice uh, with example C. So it doesn't matter if the point estimate is uh, to the left or to the right of the line of no difference for superiority, What's ma what matters is that the confidence interval itself must not touch or cross the delta. So both B and C are considered non-inferior and both of them failed superiority. Now for the purpose of this course, we're gonna call any, any of these that actually cross delta, we're gonna say it did not show non-inferiority. So don't worry about calling it inconclusive or, um, or inferior. Uh, what's important is that because, you know, I don't want you to be confused uh, by how to define inferiority versus inconclusivity. Uh, we're just going to call it either it showed non-inferior like B and C or it could not show non-inferior. So choice D, we're going to say it failed to show non-inferiority or it was not non-inferior. So choice E, example E, is not non-inferior because the confidence interval crossed the delta. The same with D, it crossed delta. The same with G, it crossed delta. So it is not non-inferior. Now choice F, it didn't cross non-inferiority line, so we can actually say it was non-inferior. The reason they're calling it subvant inferior because the entire thing is to the right of the line of no difference. So again, for this class, don't worry about that. Just focus on what's non-inferior, what's superior, and what's not non-inferior. So D, E, G, and H are not non-inferior because they are uh, on the right or across the um, delta. Sometimes in non-inferiority studies, they will also check for superiority. So although initially they weren't really trying to show superiority, they were looking for non-inferiority, once they achieve non-inferiority, they also check for superiority to see 
if they actually met superiority to. So you can see in this first example, this was a non-inferiority study. So they definitely met non-inferiority because as you can see here, the confidence interval did not cross the margin. So the margin is all the way to, uh, to the right at 1.2. So not only did it not cross the delta, but also it did not cross the line of no difference. So that's why in this first example, they're claiming both non-inferiority and superiority. Now in the second example, they failed to show superiority because it crossed the line of no, uh, no difference, but it, it was able to show non-inferiority because it didn't cross uh, the margin. In the third one, it uh, again achieved non-inferiority because it didn't cross the margin, but it also, uh, you know, inferiority because it, the entire thing is on the uh, right side of the line of no difference, which again, as I mentioned for this class, don't worry about inferiority, just focus on non-inferiority. Um, so, and also don't worry about inconclusive. This slide summarizes what I just described. As you know by now, superiority trials must always use a two-sided or two-tailed significance level or a two-sided alpha. When investigators perform a single randomized controlled trial, the result is a single point estimate, which means that if they were to repeat the study, they may get a different result. That's why it's extremely important to look at the 95% confidence interval. In other words, when the, the results are of a randomized control study is found, that's just a single point estimate. So the question is, if we do this study again, what's the likelihood that we will get something similar? And that's where uh, we get the 95% confidence interval. So, you know, the results of the study is a point estimate. And if we were to repeat the study, there's a 95% chance true mean will be between uh, that confidence interval. Now this is important because there are 5% of the time where we may actually get outliers outside of the 95% confidence interval. And that's why we have this uh, equation. If you have a 95% confidence interval, then the alpha should be large enough to cover the remainder that the confidence interval doesn't cover. So typically we use a 95% confidence interval so, which means that there are 5% left that's not covered by the confidence interval. So that's why we typically use a two-sided alpha of 5%, meaning that it covers um, the 2.5% on the right side and the 2.5% on the left side. And that's why we mean by the two-sided. Now, when it comes to non-inferiority trials, we really only care about one side of the confidence interval because we're not necessarily trying to show superior we're just trying to show that it's not worse than the, the intervention is not worse than the control. So the reason we use a two-sided uh, alpha in superiority is because depending on what side we're going to, it can either be superior or it could be inferior to the other, uh, to the other group. Whereas in non-inferiority, we're only looking at one side because we're just trying to show non-inferiority. And that's why it's okay to use a one-sided alpha. So, which, um, you know, means that now we need to alter that equation. So if we were to use a one-sided alpha, it's okay to use um, an alpha of 2.5% with the 95% confidence interval because we're only interested in one side of the uh, distribution. In other words, if we're using an alpha of 2.5 in a non-inferiority trial, we multiply by 2. So 2.5 times 2 is 5 and now you get the complete 100%. Now let's look at uh, Hokusai VTE trial, which was a non-inferiority. The primary endpoint was the first recurrent uh, VTE or VTE related death. And they're looking, uh, they're trying to show that Idoxaban is non-inferior to Warfarin. And they said the non-inferiority margin of 1.5. So what they found was the hazard ratio of 0.89. So 0.89 is the point estimate in this study and if they were to repeat the study again, the true mean of the hazard ratio would be something between 0.7 to 1.13. And of course, it, uh, it uh, crossed the line of unity, so it could not show superiority, which is okay because this is a non-inferiority. They weren't really trying to show that idoxaban is superior to warfarin. Instead, they're trying to show that Idoxaban is non-inferior to warfarin and because the delta is 1.5 and the confidence interval doesn't include the delta 
now you can claim non-inferiority. Now, it's extremely important to keep track of your p-values. This p-value that's significant here, this is the p-value reported for non-inferiority. In fact, in the same paper, they also tell you the p-value for superiority and it was greater than 0.05. So if you see the p-value, you have to first make sure that, you know, whether it's the p-value for superiority or for non-inferiority. Because the p-value for superiority, it should be greater than 0.05 in this case because it failed superiority. However, the p-value for non-inferiority should be significant as it did not cross uh, the delta. Now, the next example, uh, the primary endpoint was prevention of all stroke, ischemic or hemorrhagic, and systemic embolic event. So they're trying to see if this drug is non-inferior to warfarin. And they're looking at an absolute uh, difference. So they found the difference of negative 0.7, uh, which is the point estimate in the study. And they said if you do this again, you get something between negative 1.4 and 0.1. This was a non-inferiority study and they set the non-inferiority margin at 2. Now, this crossed the line of unity, which is 0, so it failed to show superiority. However, it did not cross delta. So although it felt superiority, it was actually able to show non-inferiority. So this drug is non-inferior to warfarin. Now, look at the p-value. So this is why you need to be careful with the p-value. If you had just looked at the p-value and said this is not statistically significant, you would have been wrong because this p-value that they reported in the paper is actually for superiority. So it's a true p-value because failed superiority, so the p-value is consistent with it. However, they didn't show you the p-value for non-inferiority. And we don't really need the p-value. We can just look at the confidence interval and say that it didn't cross the delta, so therefore, uh, this drug is non-inferior to warfarin. The last example is the comparison of prasugrel to clopidogrel. The primary endpoint composite outcome of ischemic stroke, MI, or other vascular death. And they showed that the risk ratio was 1.05, so this is the point estimate in this study, and if you do it again, you get something between 0.76 to 1.44. So it definitely crossed the line of unity, so it felt superiority, but this is a non-inferiority study. And they set the margin at 1.35. So it actually crossed 1.35. So not only did it fail superiority, but it also failed non-inferiority. So you can conclude that prasugrel is not non-inferior to clopidogrel for uh, this uh, primary endpoint of uh, composite outcome of ischemic stroke, MI, and other vascular death.